In this video, I want to show you how you can create interactable regions in your custom images in Power BI. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. If you're familiar with using maps in Power BI and there are a couple different options for you to choose from, but the key thing with the maps is that it gives you the ability to select or visualize multiple elements in the map. So let's say if you have populations in certain geographical areas, you can select those areas and it will cross filter everything in your page. And having the ability to visualize the map and actually selecting points in that map to cross filter everything in your page is a pretty interesting feature. But uh, at the moment, or at least on a lot of the iterations that I found, it sort of only works with maps or geographical areas. So I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice to have custom images where you can sort of set the selectable regions yourself to cross filter and work with it the same way that you do with, let's say, maps. So here in this report, I've simply created a table, one table that just lists out all the furnitures in certain parts of the room in a, a house, let's say, for example. And I wanted to visualize the furnitures, how many furnitures there are for each part of the room. So we wanted, I wanted the slicer visual here that let's say it's a list and I wanted to show it horizontal and I wanted the ability to select different parts of the room. So let's say dining, how many furnitures there are for that part of the building and kitchen, let's say laundry, whatever. And let's insert, I wanna insert a page site image here, sorry. So I have this floor plan, which I pulled off the internet and Wikipedia. And I wanted to visualize this and use this as a way to kind of filter the table itself. So instead of selecting from the slicer visual here, where you know it doesn't really contextualize the data, I wanted to use or find the means to select different elements here. So if I select, let's say kitchen, it will filter the table here to just show me kitchen as opposed to using this slicer. And if you look at the visualizations available for you, there is nothing of the sort. So the closest you'll find is the shape map, which uh, I mean, it works. And usually you would use this as a way to visualize maps like geographical areas but you will notice it, it has a couple of options that actually allows you to kind of control your maps. So changing the, let's say the map type, you can set a certain uh, custom map, which uh, requires a certain type of file, a JSON file, which, and if you didn't know how to create maps and export them as JSON files, you're pretty much out of luck. You can't use this one or at least I haven't found an easy way to kind of generate it for yourself. So today I'm going to show you how you can create your own kind of interactable elements in your custom image and then import them into Power BI using a custom visual. So first we're going to delete this one. So first we're going to head over to this page, the okviz.com. It's one of the uh, custom visuals that are being provided for free by sqlbi.com. Uh, really, really cool tool. And this is the custom visual that we're gonna import and use in Power BI. So here in this page, you will have access to this tool called the Synoptic Designer, which is a kind of a web area where you're able to customize the interactable portions of your images. So here, for example, um, let's, it asks us to insert an image. So we'll insert that floor plan. So you can see we, we have the floor plan here now. So here, this page is pretty intuitive. I mean, if you have a good enough quality of an image, you can use the magic one, which just auto selects certain areas in your 
uh, image, for example. So this one selected my formal living and dining, for example, um, and it just creates the points for you. And you'll see on the right hand side here, it will create areas every time you make a selection. So this one, maybe you want to name it as living, for example. If, however, you're working with an image that is not so high quality and the magic wand doesn't work, you can set the boundaries yourself. So you can create like a custom box here, for example. So I'm just drawing one here and we'll just name it as family. What's important when you're creating these areas though is that these names or these area names needs to match with whatever data you have in your Power BI report. So for example, if I wanted to use this image as a way to um, select regions, I need to make sure that these match with these. Because when we start or trying to connect this two together in this visual, it needs to find the exact same room in our list. So if it doesn't exist, you, you will see how it looks like. Um, but for now, just make sure that when you are setting up areas uh, here in this designer tool, that the names match with the data that you want to filter. So once you're done, you simply export it to Power BI. It will ask you to save the image as, so we'll save it. Um, and it will save it as an SVG document, which is uh, the file type that you will need to use with the custom visual in Power BI Desktop. So I didn't finish the demo that I showed because I've actually already created these. Um, so you'll see that I created different regions on my floor plan, creating dining, living, family, whatever, and then exported it into an SVG document, the floor plan which is gonna be here in my desktop. So now that we've created that SVG document, it's now time to import the custom visual that we want to use in our report. So to import a custom visual, you go simply here, get more. And if you just simply type OK Visit, it will just give you all of the different visuals that is uh, being provided by uh, by sqlbi.com, but in this case, we want the synoptic panel by OKBiz. So we simply add, and you'll notice that now it is an option available for you here in the visualizations pane. So we can now just delete this image that we've imported, add the, uh, the synoptic panel, and start adding the image. So you won't find the browse or the import image here um, in the formatting pane if that's where you're gonna start looking at. To show the option, you need to drag any column on the measure, so let's say the furniture, and you'll see that the option will show up on the top left. You can choose from local maps or gallery, which we'll go through in a second. So we'll choose to import our uh, floor plan, which we've created. And you'll see, here we go. So this is the floor plan with all of our uh, dif different selectable areas. And the categories that we want is obviously the rooms. So in this case, we want to select and add the room in the category. Let's remove the measure here. And we want to add the, let's say, quantity. And you'll notice that here we are. Um, you'll see that my square is not so straight, but it highlights the kitchen. And that's because we've selected kitchen in our filter pane on the top right hand corner, which we don't want actually. So let's just delete that. And you'll see that now you have created uh, sort of selectable areas in this image. So you can select, let's say kitchen, and that filters that table to just show the kitchen furnitures. Uh, I think this is, dining, this is living, family, entrance, and then your sort of bath. You'll see here that the storage area is kind of grayed out. And if you try to select it, it won't select anything. And it's just black here in the area. And that's because we don't actually have that data in our table. So you'll notice, so this area is called storage. And if you go to our data view here, it it doesn't exist. So like as a room, it doesn't exist. So that's why it's not a selectable component here in our map. And to add it is pretty simple. So you just make sure that you add it in your data. So 
since I kind of just created it here, I will just add it quickly. So we're just gonna add storage and just a random furniture. So let's say you want to store this there. If we hit close and load, that should just simply fix that. So you'll see that now you can select it as an element here in our map. You can also change the way or how the uh, elements are shown, the, the, the selectable areas in the formatting pane. So if you don't like the color or if you don't like the saturation of it, you can sort of change that, remove the borders, change the default colors, um, you know, however you want to show or visualize the data. You can even show it as uh, different colors if that's easier. And that's it. So you've pretty much created selectable regions in a custom image in Power BI very, very easily. Now let's go back to just using the visual. And I wanted to show you something else. So if we add the furniture here, so obviously you can create and generate your own maps and images with your custom regions. But what you can do is if you're out of, let's say inspiration, you can choose the gallery, which imports for you some samples of what type of images and what type of mappings you can do. So you can see here from the general or, you know, you can have different ways to visualize data. So you know, geographical areas, countries, territories, but you can even go even further. Uh, so you can choose, you know, parts of, let's say the human body, which will be selectable. You can change it to, let's say even the batting zones for baseball, or you can do even cool things like, let's say selecting, you know, different areas of a car, for example, if you're working on car repairs. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to start creating selectable regions in your custom images in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.